Coffee Monday is more than a podcast. It's a movement to reshape the way we approach Mondays and the week ahead. It's about embracing the reality that work doesn't have to dominate our lives. It's about finding that sweet spot where passion, purpose, and a cup of motivation connect. Filmed and recorded in California's Central Valley, join me, your host, Ray Pardini Matson, as I invite thriving professionals to share their stories of how they're crafting a life that's both vibrant and balanced. Well, thank you, Mayor Dyer, for being here, a man that needs no introduction. So, so happy to have you. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being here. So um, I think our paths initially crossed when I was at Marjorie Mason Center and you were on the board as the police chief. So it's been a few years and lots has changed. So yes. I would love to hear, firstly, let's kind of take it a step back. I would love to hear more about you. And I know you grew up in the area and are a proud father and husband and grandfather. Tell us a little bit about the family dynamic of the Dyer family. So born in Fresno, uh, moved to the small town of Fowler when I was uh, five years old and went to school, uh, elementary, middle school and high school, graduated from Fowler High School in uh, 1977 and then uh, went to Fresno State. And then uh, shortly after that, went to the police academy. Uh, So I took a break from Fresno State. And then uh, once I got done with the police academy, I got hired at Fresno Police Department, actually while I was in the academy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, continued with my education, got a a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And then along the way, I married my high school sweetheart, Diane. We met our freshman year in high school. And so uh, we have now been married for 43 years wonderful years Amazing. and uh, I have uh, two grown children that are they're both married Jeremy and Janelle and we have five uh, beautiful grandchildren two two uh, little granddaughters and uh, three grandsons so cool. and all of them live uh, right here and uh, they they live actually in Clovis and my wife and I live in uh, Fresno that's awesome I was gonna ask if they were close so that's nice that you get to be close with them yes what are they what do your grandkids call you do you have a name Papa Papa. Papa. Sweet. Papa Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My dad's Papa too to my kids and my nieces and nephews. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, so growing up, did you know you wanted to be in law enforcement in some way or how did you go down that path? No, I, it, law enforcement really was the furthest thing from my mind. Really? Um, my dad uh, grew up in a pretty rough environment without a father and and so he ended up dropping out of high school and he became uh, worked in construction and uh, construction industry as well as driving truck, and uh, so I wasn't sure what I was going to do later on in high school. I I got involved actually in middle school and high school into architectural drafting, mechanical mm. drawing. Thought that might be a, an avenue that I was going to go towards. Uh, later on, I went to a boy state uh, to get a taste of the little bit of the the, the government uh, um, in terms of how the state legislature worked, yeah. spent a week in Sacramento. Um, and then it was, um, later on in life, my dad went to the police academy, uh, was a reserve police officer in Fowler, went to the police academy, and uh, later became a, a police officer in Fowler. And I got to see how he came home when he was working construction or as a truck driver, mm-hmm. and, and then the difference when he became a police officer. And the fact was that you could see he was much more gratified, satisfied Mm -hmm. when he came home being a police officer. And that was really what did it for me. I got that exposure Mm -hmm. and then uh, made the decision. That's what uh, what I was going to do. Wow. Do you have siblings? I have a sister. Okay. Um, So my sister is three years older than me. Okay. And uh, a, a fact that a lot of people don't know, both my dad and my uh, sister were Fresno police officers and they oh, that's came why I wonder if it's like in the family somehow. it is that's why I ask yeah and she was a dispatch she went to the Air Force later um, went into to be a dispatcher mm-hmm. or a work in the sheriff's department she worked in corrections and then um, so when I was a sergeant I was a newly made sergeant both my my dad was a sergeant Madeira mm-hmm. and my sister um, was working in the sheriff's department and both of them came over and got hired the same day in fact I um, was part of their badge pinning for both of them. That's so cool. And uh, both my dad and my sister worked for me when I was a 
a sergeant in the police departments, which wow. you can't can't do anymore because of nepotism. But back yeah. then you could. Yeah. So yeah, and and then fast forward, uh, my niece was a Fresno police officer. Wow. Uh, my uh, her husband Fresno police officer, and then my uh, son-in-law. So it's it's been a law enforcement family for sure. Wow, that's really cool. I had no idea. Yeah, a lot of stories over a. Easter dinner. <laughs> I can only imagine <laughs> being a fly on the wall. I was going to ask you that. What What does it look like at a dire family gathering? Do you In, do certain <laughs> members host? Do you, what is it casual? Is it formal? Well, a little, a little like uh, I don't know if you've seen the program Blue Bloods with Tom yeah, Selleck. Uh, yeah. A little bit like that, where they have their family dinners and you talk about um, some of the police stories. Um, I'm different than they are. I don't remember most of the stories. Right. But my sister remembers all of them. My dad remembers all of them. So, and then my my uh, my my nephew is still working for Fresno PD. And then my uh, son-in-law actually um, transferred over, and he works for um, California Department of Corrections now wow. as an investigator. So, so everybody's uh, been involved in that law enforcement uh, arena some way or uh, form or fashion. And so, something I'm very very proud of. And very, yeah. As you know, I spent 40 years and five months in that uniform mm -hmm. prior and 18 of those as a police chief before um, taking the plunge into the political arena. Right. So how, how did that happen? Tell me, was that always on your mind? Was that a goal of yours? Did you see it coming? Was it caught? Tell me, how, how do you transition <laughs> from that? You know? Well, I had no desire to be the mayor, no yeah. desire to be in politics. Although some folks along the way had tried to get me to, to, to run for office, Alan Autry at one time wanted mm -hmm. me to uh, run for mayor. Uh, the ch you know folks from the chamber, a number of um, political folks over the years. But I, I really, I was having too much fun in the role I was in as a police chief. Yeah. And then when it got towards the end where I had to retire because of our retirement system, mm -hmm. um, some folks had come to me about, hey, maybe this is a logical next step. Well, Lee Brand was the mayor at that time, and he had a second term. Mm -hmm. uh, he had raised funds, all indications where he was going to to, to run. And uh, I lived in, out in the county he, mm -hmm. at that time. I had to, you had to live in the city to, be, uh, to run for mayor. And uh, we sold our, we were in the process of selling our house so we could be closer to the grandkids and, and my children. Sweet. And so on a Sunday, uh, the day before Mother, our Mother's Day, actually, mm -hmm. uh, our house went into escrow. And Monday I went to work and Lee Brand called me and said, uh, can you come by my office? And I went by and he said, uh, decided I'm not going to run. I think you should. Wow. And um, I really didn't want to, but, you know, there was a something inside of me, a calling or whatever you want to refer to it as. Mm -hmm. But I was miserable until I said yes. Wow. And then uh, so here I am almost three years later. So did you give it some time after he said that? Like, let me think about it. Or were you immediately like... Well, the, f the funny thing is I, w I went home and told my wife. Yeah, yeah. That and, might be uh, something you need to <laughs> consult your wife. I had told my wife for, yeah. you know, the better part of the 18 years I was a chief. Yeah. I said just, you know, because I was always afraid of leaving town. So we didn't go on very many vacations at all. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait till I retire, we'll travel. <laughs> So I was like, God, that's the she's first like, thing she's going to say. <laughs> so I, I went to her and uh, she started laughing. And she said, like a, a, a woman's intuition, uh -huh. I knew you were running for mayor the day we put the house up for sale. Wow. So uh, she's been 100% supportive as she was my whole time in law enforcement. It takes a special woman to be married to a police officer, a police chief, and now a mayor. I and agree. so I'm, I've been very, very blessed and mm -hmm. uh, tremendous support. And the rest is really history. Formerly, fortunately, I was able to win in the primary yeah. and took office January of, uh, uh, January of 21. Yeah, amazing. So how has that been? I mean, I know this is a loaded question, but just being in the public eye so much. I mean, even from the police chief role to the mayor, you're constantly in the public eye. You know, how do you deal, how do you deal with that? Um, and it's true. I mean, yeah. when I was a uh, police chief, I, you know, a tremendous amount of scrutiny. I'm sure. Uh, your entire public life, mm -hmm. your your history, everything is out there. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, I think you get used to it to a degree. But um, 
you know, I, I, I think what's, it's harder on the family than it is on me. Um, sure. It's what I signed up for. I right. understand it. Uh, you know, I'm always, you're, you're always on. Mm-hmm. No matter when you go to an event, there's, I know. you have to be on. Right. And so you kind of get used to it. Um, and it's kind of challenging at times for the family because, you know, they want me to be mm-hmm. there with them at dinner or whatever the case is. And then sometimes you can't be. Right. Yeah. Right. So what do you do to kind of like unwind? You're like always on, right? Like at your grandchild's soccer game yes. where I've seen you because our your grandkids and my kids are similar ages. So our paths have crossed. Like you're always seeing people you know, you yeah. know. So what do you do to kind of decompress and just, you know, collect yourself? Well, I uh, work out every morning. Do you? And I see you at Starbucks every morning. <laughs> And uh, you beat me to that. <laughs> I'm there too. Clearly, <laughs> we're both addicted to coffee. But and, uh, and then you know, I, I get up in the morning. I read. I read the, the Bible. I pray. I go to work out at the gym. Get my Starbucks. Love it. And then I'm ready for work. And yeah. then And then we, my wife and I, have a place over at Morro Bay that nice. we thought we were going to use as a little bit of a retirement home. So we we're, we're able to get over there maybe four or five times a year, and um, and relax. Good. Good, good. That's great. Love it. So now you've been at role as mayor now for over two years. Yep. Be three years in January. Mm-hmm. Tell me about spe- like some, some of your top of mind projects of things that like our listeners, our followers can do to support you and sure. your initiatives. Well, you know, it was very clear when I was walking neighborhoods, when I was running for mayor mm-hmm. and just, you know, being a, a police chief for many, many years, you kind of have a feel for what's important in the, in the community. And uh, the things that continued to come to the top was uh, we had to do something with the homeless, the presence of the homeless population on our freeways. Mm-hmm. At that time, we had about 650 people living on our, our freeways, uh, the canal banks. So I knew that was going to be the number one priority. Mm-hmm. And we launched a Project Off Ramp. And Project Off Ramp was providing a, an, an off ramp for people that were living on the freeways and an on ramp to a more stable life, um, emergency shelter, uh, some uh, counseling services, mm-hmm. and then transitioning those folks into a more permanent life, permanent housing, back with their family. And so it's probably the thing that I'm most proud of. Uh, yeah. Quite frankly, we've, over the last two and a half years, we've housed over 2,300 of our unsheltered population. Wow. And that means transition them into shelter and then the vast majority of those uh, on a safe exit mm-hmm. into permanent housing. And it's, uh, it's self-gratifying, quite frankly, I'm when sure. I used to go out on all of the uh, relocations when on the freeways at 7 in the morning when we relocate the people. Mm-hmm. And, and to be able to hear from a lot of these homeless people their stories, how they got there. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes I think people um, misread some of our homeless population. And sure. so getting those folks back to where they needed to be they're all of them are somebody's mother, father, right. uh, sibling. Mm-hmm. So that, that's been very rewarding. So project off ramp and we continue with that, even though not, um, focused on our freeways mm-hmm. because they're clear, but our canal banks, shopping centers, neighborhoods, all of those things are important. Amazing. Amazing. And, you know, kind of speaking to improvement of the city and Fresno as a whole beautify Fresno I feel like is also a great opportunity for people to support you and to obviously beautify the area so you want to speak to the initiatives with that a little bit too yeah beautify Fresno was something that um, originated you know as I looked around the city walked the neighborhoods Mm -hmm. drove around the city especially during the pandemic I started to see things that I hadn't seen before Mm -hmm. Uh, an increase in trash on our freeways and our neighborhoods, our shopping centers. And it seemed to me that people had gotten used to it. And we had started to lose our, mm-hmm. our curb appeal, our sense of pride in neighborhoods. And, um, you know, I thought, what, what better way to be able to clean up our cities than, than create an initiative around voluntarily picking up trash? Mm-hmm. People coming together as, as, uh, alongside of government as we do our part. Right. Uh, we in the government, we, you know, we repair sidewalks, repair streets, remove graffiti, uh, re- we replace street signs, 
all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the trash is one of those things that oftentimes gets overlooked. And so we launched the volunteer, um, the beautifyfresno.org, mm -hmm. put Mark Standriff over it full time. Mark has been an incredible director of that. He's out there every Saturday um, bringing in volunteers. We do about three cleanups a week. Amazing. Uh, and sometimes more. We are part of the um, world cleanup effort. The, we have a youth initiative where we have uh, Beautify Fresno clubs. And I think we're in nearly 20 schools now. Wow, we have cool. um, the mayor's citywide community cleanup, and then we have a, another one that we participate in. So, we've over the last uh, two and a half years, we've had over twenty-one thousand volunteers come out to clean up. Wow, that's amazing! And so, uh, I think you look around our city today. Although we still have a lot of work to do, uh -huh. um, we have we have um, made Fresno a better place to. To live. absolutely and with that too i'm noticing a lot of change downtown i feel you know like I obviously have to kind of touch on that tell me about all all of the things you're doing to support the downtown community so so downtown fresno I, I i have a firm belief that great cities have great downtowns right and you can't really claim to have a great city unless you have a great downtown mm -hmm. and if you look at what happened to our downtown with um it, it kind of got left behind when we had more of the urban sprawl with mm -hmm. housing some of our shopping centers we you know they went north first manchester now river park right. and downtown chinatown got left behind and so you started seeing a lot of vacant buildings uh you you know some of the um uh, attractive nuisance that occurs with mm -hmm. that the graffiti uh just abandoned buildings everywhere so our efforts are to revitalize it and um, one of the things that that we have tried to build off of is there are people that believe in downtown for mm -hmm. example the people that have established uh, our brewery district right um where it's not uncommon on a friday night saturday night to have five thousand people in a mm -hmm. brewery district mm -hmm. uh, when we have fresh yes there's thirty thousand people down there in one night so there's a desire for i think the younger generation to come downtown 100 percent. and we have about three thousand people living downtown we really need about ten thousand people living downtown to to really um, get us to that point where we have the momentum to go forward. Mm -hmm. And what follows people living downtown is retail, restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, entertainment. Uh, so that's that's what we're, we're working towards. Uh, we've been pursuing a lot of grant funding from the federal government, the state government. Mm -hmm. Recently been uh, got awarded $250 million for infrastructure. Amazing, uh, amazing. Largest investment ever. Yeah. And then another $43.7 million. So wow. we have almost $300 million to, to do our infrastructure downtown. Mm -hmm. Parking structures, water main, sewer main, um, uh, intermodal transportation hub, mm -hmm. a, a green space, linear park, all of those things that we're going to be doing. And now we're getting interest from developers. Uh, who are wanting to build the residential units downtown mm -hmm. and uh it's it's ready yeah, there's That's amazing all of the environmental issues are already taken care of you can mm -hmm. build up to 15 stories so we're well on our way to having a great downtown so cool so housing obviously is at the forefront of the development but do you have other ideas or concepts mm -hmm. where they're actively looking to bring those to the downtown area you mentioned retail retail there's a you know, there's a lot of people that are interested in the retail uh, as well as services, bringing services okay. downtown. And we have those. You know, a lot of people don't realize how many businesses are opening up on a weekly basis. Uh, we have a um, wine tasting on Fulton Mall. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, have our brewery district mm -hmm. uh, next to the wine tasting. There's a, a whiskey and a bourbon place. Cool. Uh, and then uh, by the brewery district, we have the Modernist. Uh, yeah. We also have another place called Bespoke. Bespoke, yeah. And then next to that is a, another whiskey saloon that's yeah. going to be opening. So a lot of those um, places are, are, are coming downtown mm -hmm. and uh, restaurants as well. So cool. And I feel like so much creativity thrives in that area. I'm, I host a working moms group every month where I just encourage community for local working women to kind of come together, all of which are moms. And we're going to a candle making workshop downtown. Oh, just really cool concepts popping up. I think it's awesome. Where's that at? It's right across from Modernist and Bespoke. Mm. Right there. Yeah, so those <laughs> are the things. Because if, if we don't bring housing, mm -hmm. all we're going to have is an 8 to 5 downtown. Right. Which, so yeah. 
we need a vibrant downtown mm-hmm. and that requires a nightlife and the nightlife is really when people live there and you start seeing an increase mm-hmm. in foot traffic we have three trolleys that we're going to be launching next month and those three trolleys will go free from downtown uh, mm-hmm. the brewery district uh, all the way through cultural arts um, the tower district fresno city college so and cool. out to fresno state campus point all for the purpose of bringing introducing our younger generation fresno state city college tower district to downtown so cool love that yep. love that um and i mean how for people that might be concerned about safety downtown at night what would you tell them uh i would tell folks that no matter where you're at in mm-hmm. any city you have to be aware of your surroundings to stay safe but right. I do believe that downtown has gotten a unfair reputation at times over the years for being unsafe. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you see a unsheltered person, homeless person downtown, Mm -hmm. it can create fear. And so we've taken steps to do everything we can to, um, to relocate those folks into housing, uh, remove graffiti. Graffiti can cause uh, fear, uh, to make sure that we have adequate lighting, replacing all of our street lights with led. Yeah. And uh, then increasing the presence of police officers, as well as what we call our ambassador program. And we now have 25 ambassadors as part of our Youth Jobs Corps initiative. And they're there for the purpose of um, giving direction to people where they may go, but Mm -hmm. also picking up trash, removing graffiti, and just having a presence downtown. So uh, I would would tell people, um, come downtown and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. It can't, um, when when 30,000 people come downtown, in one night for the Fres Yes activities and events. Right. It must be safe. True. So true. So true. And you shared with me earlier that you had kind of a vision for what downtown might look like in 20 years. Do you mind sharing that? Yeah, I, I really um, am a, I, I'm able to see very clearly uh, in terms of what I believe downtown's going to look like in 20 yeah. years. And yet you will see um, the completion of the, the high speed rail station. Mm-hmm. A high-speed rail that is traveling uh, to and through Fresno. That Fresno will be a destination point. Um, that at that time you'll probably see twenty plus thousand people mm-hmm. living downtown, and restaurants and retail and entertainment will be thriving. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have green space, and uh, we are going to be a city uh, that people will come to um, from all over the United States mm-hmm. uh, as a destination point. And yeah, I feel like once it's just getting people here, right? It's like once they're here, they see the potential, they see the growth, they stay. You've even shared that with me about, you know, other professions that have traveled to Fresno for their jobs and they end up staying when they think they're going to be here temporarily, you know? So clearly we're doing a lot of things right. It's just a matter of continuing to grow that area, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of people that want to live downtown, a six month waiting list with zero vacancies. Um, and wow. they don't mind living in a studio or one bedroom downtown. Mm-hmm. They like it. They want to walk uh, or ride a bike to where they need to go. Uh, we have um, some 9,000 employees that work community hospital. Mm-hmm. They're downtown. We have about 4,500 IRS employees that work downtown. We have our government offices, city hall, the school district, the police department, the sheriff's department, uh, probation department. So there are plenty of government um, employees downtown mm-hmm. that would like to live downtown. Absolutely. Um, I would think so. And be able to walk to work. How cool would that be? Yeah. And there's a lot of them doing that now. And then we yeah. have some technology hub interest. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, unfortunately, what happened with Bitwise downtown mm-hmm. uh, was, a, I think, to be a minor setback, quite frankly. Okay. But Oops. I do know that they set the stage for other uh, technology companies to want to come downtown. And I'm meeting with them now. That's encouraging. For sure. Now, now, when you tell when you go to outlying areas markets, and you say you're the mayor of Fresno, and or you've lived here and supported the community for years, I'm curious what they think about Fresno. What is that? What's that perception that you that you get in your line of work? Well, I, I'm starting to see a difference uh, from say, ten years ago, That's when good. I would uh, talk to folks about Fresno. It would be either where's Fresno or mm-hmm. is that a farm town? Yeah. And yes, everybody equates us with being the agricultural capital, but they don't know Mm -hmm. what they don't know. Truth. And maybe they've heard of Yosemite or Kings Canyon, uh, Sequoia National Parks, 
um, but they haven't really either visited here mm-hmm. or um, you know looked into Fresno very much. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you that more and more people today understand exactly where Fresno is, and um, where I, I believe our reputation is changing uh, across the country. More and more people are seeing that our airport is growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have one of the fastest growing airports in the nation. I know. Um, Can you touch on that a little bit? I want to. I want to know. Well, we. <laughs> I mean, had I know that those Southwest things. Southwest Airlines <laughs> came to Fresno. Yeah, no, that was huge. Uh, and although we had tried to lure them here, yeah, it's really they did their market research and knew that they would have the customer base mm-hmm. to to support them. In fact, they uh, Fresno was their number one launch of all of the airports that they launched. Clearly, uh, people were of, eager for that, right? And we have a hundred and twenty-two percent increase since pre-pandemic numbers. So wow. there's a lot of people flying out of our Fresno Air Terminal. Mm-hmm. We built a parking structure, um, mm-hmm. which is, you know, getting full. And uh, we're building a new terminal right now. That that new terminal is going to give us the ability to triple mm-hmm. our capacity for international flights. And people that haven't been through our airport at 10 o'clock at night uh, need to go see what that looks like because we have full flights leaving our airport at 10, mm-hmm. 11 p.m., 2 a.m. Uh, to go to Guadalajara. Wow. Uh, and that's one of our, our big flight destinations as well. Yeah, so cool. So continuing to, to make Fresno a destination too, you know, and the quality of life somebody can have in living here versus maybe, you know, our neighbors up north or down south, you know. Yeah. It's like case, that's a huge draw. Case in point, <clears throat> I mm-hmm. was flying to San Diego and uh, to, a, to a conference and there mm-hmm. was a uh, female uh, sitting next to, her, to me and she had uh, moved to Fresno from San Diego, her and her husband. Mm. And uh, I, I said, really? And she said, I know the first question must be, why would we move to Fresno? <laughs> and uh, so she started telling me about how much she loves it. She was able to afford to buy a house here. Mm-hmm. She lives in the Fig Garden area. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said her and her husband love it. They can walk everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's no traffic congestion. And they can afford to go out and eat um, all the time because their mortgage isn't, isn't that much. Right. And so uh, she loved it. And, and she our was, school systems are great. It's a great place to raise a family. You know, all the things. I agree. I still have friends that live in the L.A. area from college. And every time they visit, I keep trying to sell them. <laughs> I think I have one of them hooked. Um, I think that's great. And yeah. good for them for sharing that with you and being proud of that. You know, that's what we want. That's so cool. Well, you know, I used to say we have we have to sell <laughs> Fresno. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Fresno is now selling itself. And we, we've seen that since the pandemic because the influx of people coming here from the Bay Area, uh, Los Angeles and Sacramento in particular, mm-hmm. uh, people are re- relocating to Fresno in droves, maybe a little too fast because it's driving up our, our housing market. And as you know, it's uh, very difficult to find a place to rent or buy right. in Fresno. So yeah. that's because the demand's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is great to see. So, so what's next for you, Mayor Dyer? What, how can we support you and what's next on your agenda? Well, I, you know, I really want people to get involved in Fresno, begin to believe in Fresno, to, to make their way downtown, to, mm-hmm. to try it out, to come to a restaurant, the brewery district, um, and and start making that part of their normal routine to come to a, a Grizzlies game downtown, mm-hmm. to come to uh, an event, one of our many concerts that we're having in, at uh, Chichancy or um, at our uh, Selen Arena or, uh, you know, any of the venues downtown. Mm-hmm. And uh, also to, to get involved with our beautification efforts. Mm-hmm. They can go to beautifyfresno.org. They can sign up any week of mm-hmm. year-round. Uh, for one of our cleanups, we provide the the vest, the paper pickers, the gloves, wow. and all they have to do is show up for two hours and clean up. Um, they can come to any any of our neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and I really think that's what makes Fresno special, and that's part of one Fresno. Mm-hmm. The people coming from one neighborhood to another to help people, um, people they don't know, and maybe a neighborhood they've never been to, mm-hmm. and and that's really what I want people to be get more focused on our city as a whole and less focused on perhaps the neighborhood in which they live in. Right. Love that. Kind of opening your eyes a little bit more to that. And I feel like obviously you were very much exposed to um, protecting and better serving our community through the police department. But as the mayor, 
I mean, was it everything? Like, how was that stepping into that role? Were you overwhelmed, kind of knew the territory? Mm. Like, was there like a big lesson that was like, okay, I need to dive into this, you know? What was that like? Well, I didn't know what I didn't know. <laughs> and or you I do, thought you might have known. And yeah. Yes, I, I do police work. Uh, yeah. I knew government. Yeah. Uh, 18 years as a police chief, I interacted a lot with council and, mm-hmm. and the mayor and so forth. But it's different when you become the mayor because you, you in, in the police department, you give direction and people actually follow, listen to you. But when you get in as the mayor, uh, that's not the, it doesn't happen. <laughs> You have to collaborate and work with your council to get things done. Mm-hmm. And there are certain things I can do as a mayor that I may not need council support because uh, we have a strong mayor form of government. So the, 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 the mayor hires a city manager, city manager hires all of the department directors except for the city attorney and city clerk. Mm-hmm. And so we, we're, we're over the operational aspect. But um, getting the budget passed, I need to have council support. And mm-hmm. All three of my budgets, I've uh, fortunately got a 7-0 vote. But that's because nice. we work together. Yeah. And um, it's, it's not my way or the highway. It's our way. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is there are certain things. Uh, housing the homeless. Couldn't do that without council support. And that's mm-hmm. uh, us going together and state money, buying motels. But I can't just go out and buy a motel and as an emergency shelter. Right. I need counsel to support that. So those are the things that I, I really learned in my first year because the first six to eight months, I was, it was a little frustrating. And I was okay. beginning to question whether I'd made the right move <laughs> because uh, it seemed like things weren't getting done as fast as I would like. We were getting a lot of things done, but not as fast as I liked. Yeah. So fast forward now, good relationship with my counsel. Uh, it's a give and take. And, mm-hmm. you know, it seems like we're, we're starting to work really good together. And uh, when that happens, then the, pe- the, the people are happy. Right. Because we're able to deliver service faster. Right, for sure. That's awesome. Well, I'm so honored to have you here, and we're so proud to have you representing Fresno. And I thank you for your time and sharing not only your professional story with me, but your personal story with me and how our listeners and our followers can follow along as well. So thank you. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. And yeah. You've been a very kind host. (laughs) I try. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks for listening. Feel free to rate and review this episode here and connect with us on Instagram if you have any thoughts, questions, or any guest suggestions. Thanks.